Hi everyone, welcome again to the part 10 of our meta-analysis tutorial. This will be the part 10, and last time we have seen part 9, which was about random effects meta-analysis. We have basically seen the uh, theoretical uh, intuition of uh, random effects meta-analysis. In the previous parts on part 7 and part 8, we have mainly seen how to pull effect sizes from scratch, just using uh, the fixed effects methods. So if you haven't watched those uh, tutorials, I highly recommend going back and watching them, um, and so that uh, today's session will be will be much clearer. So today we will talk about uh, random effect meta-analysis. I mean, we will extend uh, what we have seen last time. So last time we were covering mainly on the uh, theoretical part. Today we will uh, dive into the um, into the practical part. So uh, let me go back to what we have seen last time and remind you a little bit uh, about what is random effect meta-analysis and then afterwards we will uh, we'll dive into, into the practic practical things. So uh, as I said, random effect meta-analysis uh, assumes all studies are part of a homogeneous population um, and that's, uh, that's uh, this uh, heterogeneity, the heterogeneity in effect size or the difference in effect size, in observed effect size is not only due to sampling error, uh, that means a sampling error, but also um, it assumes that there is uh, an, a difference, there is a variance across populations, uh, the way um, the treatment is assigned and many other variations or variances should be, should be accounted. So the basically you uh, take two, two sources of heterogeneity, one is a sampling error and the other one is uh, between study heterogeneity. <coughs> So um, this is a way how you calculate the effect size. Mainly, you, you know, the fixed effect size. You calculate the, um, the observed effect size. You summarize the observed effect size, but that's uh, that's uh, um, um, compromised by by the uh, sampling error. That's the fixed effect size formula. But if you want to do random effects meta analysis, that means you need to account another error, and that's uh, between uh, between study heterogeneity, and that's how you calculate it. So if you consider the whole thing as a new, and then that means you add uh, the new uh, between the new study variance or the new um, the new uh, the new matrix that's causing the difference across the observed effect size. So that will be the formula. Otherwise, uh, the effect size. Uh, will be uh, will be will follow the same principle as I said. You need to weight it with a weighted uh, with a weighted average. So um, as we said last time, uh, we have seen uh, these are the, the way uh, you calculate the weights. Uh, that means the inverse variance method. But again, uh, because we are doing the random effect meta analysis, we consider another uh, another uh, uh, heterogeneity, and that's uh, is tau squared. That's what makes it the, the uh, weighted uh, this weighting. Uh, that's it's, it makes it the uh, random effect weights because it's it accounts another source of heterogeneity. Otherwise, uh, once you get the weight, uh, then the weighted average will be will be calculated similarly. But there are different methods. There's one and the method, which is uh, not the old one. Uh, probably, um, <laughs> I mean, for historical reasons, uh, it has become like a standard. Uh, if, I mean, but uh, it has its own uh, problems and limitations. And, um, you can go back to the previous video and then find out the details. And uh, the other one, which is actually the uh, state of the standard, would be the uh, restricted to maximum likelihood, and that would be uh, this method for especially for continuous podcasts. And there are also other ways of calculating tau square, and that's a Coleman method, and empirical bias, and the acidic junction. And I will not go to the details uh, because we have already covered it last time. So as I said, if you have a continuous outcome, you use to use uh, the layer method, the restricted to maximum likelihood method uh, of uh, uh, transfer solutions, and then uh, for binary we use uh, polynomial. And uh, if you want to reproduce uh, like existing published meta analysis, then you will have to use uh, Gerson Yang method because especially the older uh, meta analysis papers, they always use this Gerson Yang method of post estimation. And uh, we have also mentioned that if you have a very high heterogeneity, uh, then it's better to use this uh, the acidic, acidic junk method. Yeah, so as uh, they said, you know, in, in this formula, because you, you probably need this, <coughs> uh, you need this uh, tau square formula, but for the tau square, um, some of the methods are really, um, some of the methods, they kind of have their own formula, so it's maybe easy to uh, calculate them by hand, uh, but some of them are um, <coughs> they're iterative, so you can't really, uh, you can't really do them by hand, so you have to use uh, continuous algorithms because it's, uh, it's using like iterative methods, so for that, you can't, you can't really uh, calculate them by hand. So uh, the formula, that there are closed expressions, that means there is a uh, defined formula, so you can use that formula to uh, calculate the tau square and account it in your uh, So last time, if you remember, uh, with the fixed effect size method, we have uh, kind of calculated all the manually, and we created our own function, and uh, we pulled effect sizes. Uh, let me run some of the things, especially the one I, uh, so for this, uh, the first thing that I need is I need to load the data that I already 
the function last time. So these are the packages I need. And this is uh, because I need this DNA tag, because I need this data, the CCI application data. I think this package is package for this uh, <coughs> I think this library. And the other thing I need is the meta package. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I need. So uh, to use uh, another EML, it's very simple. We can use uh, host and snapshot meter. We, we can use the load uh, the meta package. Meta is actually a pretty more advanced package. Now, <coughs> but I found that it's kind of easy to use. Um, some of the functions are uh, easy to remember. So that's why I, I think at least for tutorial, it's better to practice um, meta. And then if you really are comfortable with uh, other, um, other uh, package, then you can go to the package. Otherwise, for Arena, uh, for this uh, restricted, restricted maximum of the database cost for summation, it's not the package. Meta doesn't have, it doesn't, it doesn't have that. But when you load the uh, meta package, uh, I think the meta from all meta blocks, because uh, uh, the meta is, uh, at least some part of the functions of meta are built on the package. So that's why you have to call the meta package. But if you have problems, uh, then you might have to call the meta package again. So let me load this package. <coughs> so now the package is loaded, um, and the package has loaded, and this is the data that I have. So I have the study, the user order, and they have, um, I think, the number in the experimental group and the name in the experimental group, and the standard deviation. So these are three of the main values that I need for the experimental group. And at the same time, I have also other values for the control group. And if I want for subgroup analysis, I have additional variables for subgroup analysis already um, from the calibration to you know to I don't I really can see whether there is uh, an effect of this this variables on this um, on effect size. <coughs> the others I don't have to go through all these uh, training methods, so I will simply just go um, at the very end and I will show the topic that we uh, fixed it created and then after that we will go to the normal effects method. So it's simple <coughs> for uh, fixed effect method, and that means what we use is like meta point, and that means uh, the first function is uh, I mean the first argument is any, which means any number, the two times the people included in the experimental group. And then <coughs> um, they're actually defining our data as any. Um, actually, you can also see it um, uh, using the names. And then uh, since calculation happens, should be. Let me see what is it called. Yeah, let's see what it's called. And that should be sometimes better because it has <coughs> uh, to predict. You know, I think my um, meta report is also okay, but sometimes it's not. Yeah, so here are the name of the variables again, just to see. So the meta point function it requires any, mc, and the mean e, and the mean c. And these are the main main things that meta point function needs. So, so you call a meta point, and then any is any, and then mc uh, you have mc, and the mean the mean e, and the mean c, and the mean c. And then you give it the uh, standard deviation values, and then after that you define the data, and then you give the fixed rate metric. This is a fixed rate metric. If you if you'd like to have actually more um, control, <coughs> um, you can simply uh, see meta point, and then it has to do something, and then you can simply run this and uh, run this. Uh, so then you can see um, what are what does this meta point function needs. Uh, these are like all kinds of different uh, parameters, and then you can run this uh, to change some of the things. Yeah, so you can see the data is going to be created in the basic story. So those are the ones are uh, these ones. So now if I run it, my meta analysis should be ready. You simply run it, so it's already run. That means I have 9.37.9, and the final number of the temperatures are 27.37, and then the total effect size uh, is 9. That means the fixed effect size is 10 as the um, yeah, the sum of the mean difference is minus 1.29. And then the random effect size, of course, it's also part of it. Uh, it's telling us this minus 1.29 is uh, a mean of the difference. And then you see that some of the factor generation, which is uh, high score. And it is a uh, really sounds also some of the score and factor generated values. Um, and if you uh, dig it up, and then you can see the high score also is not there. And then the high score, high score is there. So uh, it's quite small. So that means the factor generation is, uh, is quite large. So it's, uh, you can assume there is, uh, I mean, you can say there is no effect about uh, statistical uh, heterogeneity. That's why um, the fixed effect models and the random effects model, they are quite the same, basically, as you see. So obviously, the conversion is a little bit different. Yeah, so let's see more parameters. Uh, so I'll more parameters. <coughs> Let me copy this again. And then I should add here, um, uh, so for example, cow score method. Effect size metric is already defined, it's SID. And then um, the uh, method cow. That would be um, I, uh, this one is meta tau, <coughs> and that's the meta tau, and the ML. Uh, I mean, it could also be by default, uh, have ML. Uh, it says it's inverse variance, and then it tells you uh, they have used a restricted maximum, I think, for the random effects meta analysis. So that means <coughs> it's by default, uh, have ML. But if you, are, if you want to make sure that you use uh, have ML, you can also define that. And then uh, after that, uh, I can simply type run. Uh, if I don't want to see the pixel effect, I can say uh, random t, then ML. And then, or you can simply type T, and then fix it also, you can say uh, false. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. You can simply type it like that. And then, uh, if you want the out, out uh, what is that thing called? Hard to clap uh, adjustment. If you remember, we mentioned that in our previous tutorial here, the hard to clap adjustment is required for uh, um, adjusting the uh, calculation confidence interval. And it's recommended, especially if you have a small number of studies. I mean, we don't have many studies, we only have nine studies. So, it's, uh, uh, I think it's, it's good to use. So, but 
depending on the number of studies you have, depending on what you're doing. I mean, if you use uh, the Hartman class, I guess, more for um, for like the number of studies less than five, then it's uh, it's probably problematic to use uh, the confidence interval. So two is not yet really really wide, really wide that you have you have to use. So you really need to use the Hartman class. At least I have noticed that in the class in the courses that I've taken. Okay, then uh, you can see that you can use the Hartman class. This one and two, and then you can use the See the because I already defined fixed effect analysis as false, I should not see the, the result for the fixed effect Yeah, so now it's telling us this, and then <coughs> yeah, so it's of course it's significant. Um, that means the, the intervention, the intervention is reducing um, the uh, suicide. Uh, it means uh, uh, whatever kind of uh, intervention that is, I'm not familiar with what kind of intervention that is, but some intervention is reducing that intervention, reducing uh, suicide rate by uh, standard deviation of indifference of uh, minus indifference. This is of course it. So this, uh, I mean, this may need some. Uh, uh, no, this is uh, statistically it's significant, but clinical or you know from the uh, psychiatric point of view, from a medical point of view, you have to um, kind of uh, interpret it in a way from the clinical point of view, and that may be uh, clinically significant in terms of you know avoiding uh, or you know, mortality and you know, the unnecessary side effects and symptoms after the suicide. So I would say this could also be uh, clinically significant, but to say clinically significant, uh, you have to be really uh, an expert in the subject uh, in the domain, and then um, yeah, our job here is to just show uh, whether the effect is uh, statistically significant. That we come from it. Studies and it's giving me confidence interval for each, and that I think it's also giving us the, the weight of yeah, the weight of individual studies. And then uh, number of observations, I think it's the same kind of articles that we have seen. And then after all this, if you want to uh, put in the workshop, then what you can do is you can simply write uh, twice and then one if, and then you can see yeah, one if. <coughs> now I should be able to see my works class. So here I have. Yeah, I have a study. Um, yeah, the study is not labeled yet, but I should define that. So the study should be the author, uh, author year. So it's uh, the author year. Let me just let me check how that the author is actually defined. So the names, um, suicide prevention. This one. Okay, that's author. Now I should define the study ID. Start with my um, study ID. So I should define study ID. Study year actually, not study ID. And then that's the uh, author. That's the author name. So now this should change. Um, yeah. This is finished. Okay, so it seems I should not put it in, in a quotation mark. I think I must put it in a quotation mark. Anyway, <coughs> so if you define the, uh, the author, so it gives you the study ID or the study name as the author, and then you see the, all the effect sizes. You can kind of manipulate uh, what should be on the left side and what should be on the right side, and things like that. You can also change the color, and there are really so many uh, so parameters that you can change. Uh, um, that's, you just type color, for example. There are so many. I mean, color diamond is like, uh, what should be this one? I think this diamond sign. Let's say if I want it to be, um, because it's uh, suicide, let me put it in So that's. Yeah, so then it will be red. And then oh, that's the only parameters that you can you can you can go and check. So color uh down I will check and then it's like another one. And color goes to one two. It can seem to be so let me add another variable and then check uh, the parameters of forests. That's it's that's only so I don't need <coughs> this and let me just scroll up. I think this would be easier if I use uh, like maybe color studio, but but I can also open it in Yeah in Safari. Oh, okay. Ah, okay, it's confused. So it's confused uh, with uh, whether it's uh, um, from the meta or metaphor. So it's uh, because we have two forest functions, uh, either for metaphor or meta. So it uh, seems it's confused. So in RSTU, actually, it asks you uh, which, yeah, okay, the forest RNA is if you use metaphor for, uh, uh, for metaphor packages, forest RNA, but if you use simply the uh, uh, meta, meta package forest, then it's, uh, it's simply forest. But it's here, it's showing us a uh, uh, metaphor, <coughs> not a meta. Maybe I check here. Maybe in RStudio, I can simply uh, quickly check it because it's uh, RStudio seems to be sometimes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here I opened um, RStudio. Let me check how it is. Library, uh, meta, and then I will check uh, the forest function. Forest. Now, if I check all the arguments, let me pull this to the side. 
So now it's giving me two options. That's I think that's a good thing with Arrow Studio. So it's giving me two options, which uh, from which package I'm looking for about the forest uh, function. So I'm looking I'm looking the arguments of the forest package that belongs to the meta library, not the meta for um, forest function. So I should simply click this, and then this will give me every detail that I need. <coughs> so you have um, all these different different things uh, if you want to manipulate the size of the figure and yeah, I mean, so many so many options. Arrow Studio seems to be drunk. Okay, yeah. Now let me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many arguments that you can uh, that you can check. That you can check yourself. You can even sort the variable. Um, I think the, the relatively the useful ones are like the size of the graph. How you you know you change this graph. And sometimes you may need if you have so many studies, uh, like maybe twenty something or even hundred. If you have that kind of studies, that means you need to stretch um, this uh, default uh, the default output of the graph. That means you need to increase the height and use all these you know all these different um, yeah to make it uh, to make to make your figure bigger. Uh, that means uh, you need uh, all these different parameters. That they are. They are probably useful. I use. Uh, I sometimes use those parameters. Uh, maybe I actually check if they are. If I remember them, maybe. Yeah, these are the plot widths. Okay, plot widths. Uh, you can kind of define it. I think layout is the. the is the one for the layout. You can use like the JAMA output or the. Um, uh, what was the other one? The Raveman because you, you know Raveman. Raveman is from the Cochrane. <coughs> I think that's a layout. Let's check. That's one one for me something that we want. Uh, so that means we have the gamma option, and then the Raymond also. I think there are two um, tools. So the graph would be would be something it looks like. So the gamma you know, would like to have this kind of figure, so they ignore um, everything else. And they simply program it's kind of the figure it looks nice, but it ignores all the other parameters. I am not really a fan of this. So and then there's another one for Raymond. If you know Raymond, it's a you can also do meta analysis using Rayman, or you can do like quant <coughs> um, quantity appraisal and many other things. I think Rayman is, is kind of user friendly for the thing, but for other people, it's not really useful. Yeah, so that's uh, Rayman. Looks like it looks actually nice. It colorizes it, um, but otherwise, I mean, we already colored it with the this function. So that means the Rayman is overriding um, with a different color. Yeah, so there are many, many ways. You can also like round and, and many other options. Anyway, this is uh, something that I want for the uh, standardized mean difference, but if I want mean difference, I can also different. simply remove this uh, S part and then simply mean difference in order. And then I, I mean, for mean difference, that means I'm assuming uh, all the studies uh, they are measured on the same side, you know, the same side measurement, they are measured with the same, with the same tool, with the same techniques, with the, exactly the same kind of parameter. In that case, you can mean difference, otherwise, it should be standardized. Then you have to use um, mean difference, I mean, standardized mean difference. So let me rewrite it just to do it on mean difference, and then after all this. <coughs>